What's up scavengers, I'm Scandinavia here. In this video, you will come along me on my build of a vivarium waterfall. Note that this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more like a video on how I did it as inspiration for you. This was my first ever waterfall built, so I made a ton of mistakes. Mistakes that you won't be making after watching this video. So let's get started. The absolute first thing I did was to plan up a sketch of the waterfall in my head. Planning a waterfall can be tricky as you have to think about both the aesthetics and the functionality of it all. Plus making sure that the water flows where you want it to flow. And here's the tank I will be making the waterfall in. I made a small chamber with glass using aquarium silicone. This chamber will hold the water and the pump. I then drilled a hole in the side of the tank for the pump cord to get through. I filled the hole with silicone so that the water wouldn't leak out. And here we are basically. So looking back I should have placed the hole higher up so that if the silicone would leak the water would not seep through as it would be above the water chamber. Keep that in mind when making yours so you don't make the same mistake I did. One thing that is really important to have that I noticed is to have a pump that can be adjusted in strength. This helps you tremendously as just a regular fish tank pump is most of the time going to be far too strong for a calm waterfall. This is a so called pond pump with an added switch to make it easier to control the water flow. Other than that, this part went pretty smoothly. The chamber was watertight and looked as I wanted it to be. There was one more thing I should have made before doing anything else, but I will get to that later. I then had a vinyl tube connected to the pump that went up where I wanted the outflow to be. I fastened it with some duct tape to the glass. The next part is where everything went south basically. You see, I was using expanding foam, a great material as it is very easy to sculpt once it is dry, and easy to apply. This was, as I said, my first ever waterfall build, as well as my first time using expanding foam. These are the things I learned. First of all, the foam is really strong to expand, and will push anything you put in it away, as this log piece for example. I had to secure it with extra sticks. Secondly, this stuff is the stickiest substance you will ever handle. Oh my god, it sticks to everything. And that's not all. Since it is foam, it is not the slightest solid to the touch, as silicone might be, but instead super soft and crumbles if you press it. This I noticed far too late, as I started to place in some rocks into the foam, to go with my design. The foam then crumbled and sunk beneath the rocks and everything fell apart. The camera stopped recording and I was too stressed to set it up again. But, well, here is what it looked like after it had dried a bit. A total disaster in my opinion. The foam had even sunken down in the water chamber and some had stuck to the pump. As I said, super sticky stuff. Well, my tip to you is that you should not place anything onto the foam until it has dried. It is easier and better if you let it dry and then carve out where you want the rocks or whatever you want to put in to go and then silicone them there. Well, lesson learned, I guess. The next step was to carve a path for the water out of the now dry foam. This went smoothly, with little difficulty. The next step was to mix the substrate for the coating of the foam. I used normal cocoa fiber and dried leaves to give it a bit more texture. Then comes the silicone coating. I used black aquarium silicone for this and so should you. Since if the cocoa fiber does not cover everywhere, you don't have to worry that much as it will just be black and very hard to notice. So let's get to it. Don't mind this video as I made a ton of mistakes and I will instead explain how you should do. Start from the bottom and work your way up, covering bit by bit in silicone and then cover it with mixture as fast as you can. Please don't do what I did, covering the whole thing in silicone and then cover it with the mixture. I did it this way and the silicone started to dry in the sun at the top before I had finished. Also, make sure that the mixture you're using to put on the silicone is super dry when applied. Otherwise it won't stick, as I unfortunately learned from experience. As you may hear, I made quite a few mistakes, resulting in me having to do it all again. But that I did off camera. But then it was all covered. Well, not all of it, as you can clearly see some black patches here and there, but I took care of that later. At this point, I thought it was all done. Turns out it was far from done. 
The water was leaking from here, as there were not any walls to keep it in, so I really had to make some barrier for the water, so that it wouldn't leak. To do this I cut away a bit of the silicone skin where I wanted the barrier to go. This is because otherwise the barrier might fall right off, since you're applying it on top of the cocoa fiber. Plus the cocoa fiber mixture will lead water under the barrier, if not this step is done. When I finally cut off the silicone skin I applied a rich wall of silicone and also placed some rocks there for aesthetics. Then covered the silicone with the cocoa fiber mixture. As you can see, here's also where I patched up some of those dark spots with a new layer of silicone and mixture. I also placed a rock at the water outflow to make the water spread a bit more over the hillside and go up against the glass a bit more, using the same method as before. And there we go, patching and barrier building done. I know, I know, the water chamber looks super unfinished with the white ugly foam everywhere, but that will not decrease the performance the slightest. And if you follow my tips, your waterfall won't have these ugly foam pieces everywhere. I think it's looking pretty good, let's fire it up and see how it works. Ah, that was a bit lame, so I increased the power of the pump. Oh my, that was way too strong. Well, there we go, that's better. With everything running smoothly and no leaking. I decided to take care of a new problem. The pump made a lot of vibrations and noise. So I decided to push dishwashing sponge pieces under it to decrease the vibrations. This is what I talked about earlier, what you should do in the first step, as it was a pain to try to get those pieces under the pump, as the now stuck vinyl tubing would hardly move. So if you will be making a waterfall like this, make a foam casing for the pump before inserting it. Well, despite all the setbacks, I think this waterfall looks awesome, at least for being the first time I have ever tried to make one. I will surely make more in the future, and then I will know from my previous mistakes. This is a little two part series, where in the next part I will introduce ants to this tank, as well as make it into a true vivarium with plants and soils, so stay tuned for that. Also, make sure to follow me on my Instagram, where I post updates on my ant colonies as well as my builds. Well, that was it scavengers, I hope to see you again in the next part. Until then, have a good one, bye!